Welcome into K-State Online. I am Mason Voth, joined by Drew Galloway. And if you see us, we're either probably talking about something not very good, but recently we've had a lot of good things to talk about because it involves commitments. And K-State has added again to their football roster another 2024 edition. This guy could come in and immediately we'll see how they end up wanting to utilize him. But Caden McMahon is the addition for K-State a 2024 player from Tyler Junior College. He had been committed to TCU previously, decommits, now is going to be a Wildcat. And we've seen K-State have success with junior college guys, specifically from Tyler over the last handful of years under Chris Kleiman and his staff. Uh, So what is the book on Caden McMahon, a guy that played linebacker and safety at Tyler? Yeah, it just feels like every time that K-State is involved with a Tyler Junior College player right now, I feel like it's a safe assumption that he'll probably end up at K-State just from how it feels right now. But it's an interesting recruitment in the sense that he was previously committed to TCU and TCU fires our defensive coordinator. Both both parties kind of go their separate ways and he was full on. It seemed like he was willing to go through the spring and just spend another year at Tyler and then his recruitment really picked up again after his senior fi- or his spring film went out and teams kind of saw that. And he moved from safety to linebacker over the spring, which is where most of his uh, recruitment traction kind of came from. And Iowa State was involved. Iowa State offered before K-State, got the official visit before K-State. K-State offers right before he goes to Ames and then schedules the official visit for right after he goes to Ames and K-State ends up getting him. And I believe it was uh, Houston offered even later than K-State in Houston. It was just never a discussion for them. So it, it's a big time recruiting win because it feels like they really flex their muscles. And we've had this kind of talk before about how Iowa State used to be like big, bad Iowa State when it came to K-State football recruiting. And now it's just it just seems like more often than not, K-State is getting their priority targets over Iowa State. Yeah, and this feels like a a good addition for K-State because we know that there's the background there. So obviously, this staff is comfortable where you trust this program to produce guys for you that are going to come in and some contribute immediately and others, you know, you at least think they're going to be able to stick around and, and develop because I think that's been the other kind of notable thing here is the retention of guys like this. We saw that they added Daniel Cobbs. Uh, at the end of the last cycle, probably honestly similar time frame of when uh, yeah. McMahon came in. And then Kobe Savage is easily the most notable because of how things worked out with how talented he was for the two years he was at K-State. So what do you uh, what do you make of McMahon's chances in terms of the timeline for when he gets to K-State and when we see him contributing on the field? Because we know K-State has been looking for linebacker help uh, periodically throughout the spring. He seems like somebody that can come in and provide at, at worst depth right away. And the intriguing part of McMahon is because he spent just one year at Tyler Junior College that he does have the red shirt available. So I'm interested to see how K State utilizes that. Do they play him in four games and shut him down? Do they just burn the red shirt and let him play right away? Because this is a. a, 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 a playing we also have to remember that he literally just moved to linebacker over the spring so there's probably going to be a little bit of of um development on knowing how to play linebacker at this level playing in the 335 and kind of moving him along that way so he might be somebody that you might not see in the first half of the football season which I, i feel like is a safe bet with just learning a new position didn't participate in the spring. So he's a little bit behind in that sense. But I think that he's a guy that you might see come along and kind of like Rex Van Wy, uh, how he did last year, how he started playing near the end of the season. Because McMahon is a pretty raw project at this stage, which is totally fine. Uh, but it, it's somebody that you probably would, you'll know his name probably more week 10, week 11, rather than week one. So you say he he's raw right now, but in terms of what you've seen and then also just kind of size and, and measurables, what do you think of of McMahon and, and how you would project him? Not necessarily just, hey, here's how he fits in this year, but long term, what would the the idea be for a player like this? Long term, I think that he's probably somebody that you can slot into the Sam linebacker position because he does have a background at safety. 
and just like Desmond Purnell did, just like uh, Cameron Salas does right now. So he's somebody that you can probably slot into that Sam role and kind of let him be the hybrid safety linebacker. Uh, the one thing that uh, really, really popped to me watching him is that he will have no issues getting up to physicality and coming up and hitting somebody because he only played like six or seven games at Tyler, but he made a lot of tackles, made a lot of big hits. And he's not afraid to really put his face in and go. He can drop back into coverage and is good there. Uh, the one thing, too, and this is why, like, this year's probably going to be a little bit more of a, del- of a developmental year uh, with him, is that he is probably a little bit undersized right now in terms of weight. So he's somebody that will be a good project for Coach True because he loves taking on these projects. And the body by True stuff is is real. And I think that he's somebody that can really put on like 15, 20 pounds and be a really, really good Sam linebacker at this level. And a a lot of that probably just has to do with the fact that he was playing safety more recently. And that's the, the target. I mean, how, how does that translate then? How easy of a transition do you think it is for him to go from safety to linebacker? And then also uh, what skills can carry over there that might make him uh, a little bit more, I don't know, dangerous than just your standard linebacker. At the Sam position, I think that the transition can be done a lot easier because that Sam position really truly is in a 3-3-5 spot, kind of the combination of a linebacker and a safety. So I think that the transition will be a little bit seem uh, a little bit more seamless than if he was moving to like a Will or the Mike linebacker spot. So I, I'm kind of fascinated to see how quickly he comes along because, I mean, we saw Desmond Purnell initially was a safety and then moved to the Sam spot, and then Cameron Salas was a safety, and then moved to the Sam spot. So this is going to be another one. And I think that the the main little transition and transitional period that will really go along well for him is being able to play in coverage because he was good in coverage at Tyler. And I think that we've kind of seen that with uh, Desmond Purnell. He's been pretty good in coverage. And I think that the other thing that will really be able to highlight him at the Sam spot is how aggressive he is and how willing he is to come up and hit somebody because he's somebody that you could really deploy on a blitz because he's really relentless in getting to the quarterback. So in terms of additions for the 2024 season in K-State's roster, they added 16 high school or JUCO kids and then nine transfers from other uh, you know Division One institutions. What do you what do you make of how the class has kind of come together for K-State in terms of the balance kind of the 16 to nine and then with what might be left, is there anything else positionally that K-State might be trying to clean up and do uh, with anything that might remain open scholarship wise? Honestly, my only real like concern, and it's not even like a super big concern right now for what K-State has in the 2024 class is that I, I don't love not taking a high school defensive tackle I know getting Malcolm Alcorn, Malcolm Alcorn Crowder to qualify is major because he's a guy that has three years left, but I would have liked somebody in the high school ranks. But in terms of total roster, and we've talked about this a few times now, this is a, as close to a complete roster that K-State has had. And I would say that's even probably more complete than the 2022 Big 12 Championship team was. Like This seems like they're really loading up and have ample depth at a lot of different positions where if somebody goes down, they have somebody that I think could come in and play. And it's just a really fun roster to think about because in this day and age, having probably, I'd say, 99% roster completion right now is excellent. And the one position that I think that k would really want, but I'm just not sure how they're going to be able to go about it. I know that they've kind of hit it uh, with a walk-on junior college player, but I think that they still want another offensive lineman in the 2024 class. But I I think that that's, again, like with a lot of these ads lately, outside of really Dylan Edwards, and he could even qualify Dylan Edwards in that, that it was more of like a luxury ad. And it's not something that K-State, I think, really needs. But if they can find another tackle, they they will definitely not say no. Yeah. Uh, And with this addition, so you get to the 25 guys. Of those 25 guys that are – either 2024 recruits or transfers in the, for the 2024 season, at least nine of them have four-star status from at least one of the sites. So that's a combo of the high school kids coming in and the transfers that K-State added. That 
the level of which they've brought in players is really strong. And you pointed this out back during signing day when, you know, people were maybe kind of panicking about the size of K-State's class and everything. The class score for K-State this season is better than the one last season uh, yes. or in the, 20, in the class of 2023. So, and that, you know, was a pretty talented class that was, was brought in with that. So and they're in good shape there. And now they're all the way up to 42nd in terms of the national rankings on, on three, uh, when you go in there and look at that. So they, they didn't really have this major drop off. And, uh, another thing that we've talked about too, is another good way to do this because of the size and, and amount of commits that certain people bring in. Uh, cause if you go and look at like the teams that are ahead of K-State, they all have more commits and some in a much more, you know, substantial way. Um, like Rutgers is 40th. They have they took 25 high school or JUCO kids. Uh, Nebraska took 27 of those. Um, so you can find some big numbers in there. K State only sits at 16. So go look at the average rating of the recruit, and K State is much higher than a lot of these teams that are ahead of them. So it's all based on need and K State. You know they only needed so much. They did that. And then they also had a really strong transfer hall. That's a yes. that's the big deal. So it seems like K State is working this really almost exactly how you want to in college football these days, where they're getting they're elevating the level of high school and JUCO recruit that they haven't had in years. Chris Kleiman's done a good job with that, and they are really starting to work the transfer portal well. And we knew that before you know the portal and NIL stuff really blew up because you got guys like Julius Brents before that. But now we're we're really seeing it that they've got things figured out. K State football is in a really good spot, and certainly uh, the addition of Cade McMahon fits right into that because this is not a need for K State, but this is a luxury add with some serious upside. Yeah, they're they're a well oiled machine right now, and kind of just seems like there's a lot of positive momentum building for K State in terms of uh, football right now. And I would also say that. You might not see some of these names pop up right away uh, in terms of true freshmen being able to contribute, but I think that that's because the roster as a whole is in a lot better spot where they probably don't need a fresh, a true freshman to play, but if one is able to, one will, because we've seen that this, this staff is very willing to let freshmen play right away. And the other thing is that the 2023 class probably had a lot more star power at the top. But I think that this, the 2024 class probably came together and has more, has more depth and more guys that, I, that you can probably see like, hey, this guy could be a contributor two, three years from now. And I'm not saying that the 2023 class doesn't, but I think that there's just a lot more depth in the 24 class compared to like where the star power with Avery Johnson and like Asa Newsom and Jack Fabris and Austin Romaine and all those players came in as true freshmen and were able to contribute where the 24 class, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see that right away. But like I said, it's probably because the roster is just in a lot better shape. Yeah, there's, the holes aren't as big for young guys to step in at 18 or 19 years old to take them over like maybe there was last year. So you feel which good about good thing. Go which ahead. is a good thing. Yeah, like, yeah. You don't want to have to be reliant on true freshmen to play right away. But there are some guys that I, I can look at and be like, in next year at this time, we're probably talking about them as somebody that is going to be able to play as a redshirt freshman. And if you look on uh, KSO in the, the Buzz article, you'll see one that has been pointed out to us multiple, multiple times by now. Yeah, uh, it. I would I would say in, in college football, if you're playing guys that are 18, 19 years old, more often than not, it's a bad thing than a good thing. You know, like yes. Avery Johnson last year, when he played that that's an exception to have that be the 18 or 19 year old that's on the field for you. Uh, you're just not going to be very successful in college football. Uh, the more that happens. So we'll see uh, how things go and where everything goes from here for K state, but they continue to fill out the roster. They add Caden McMahon, a transfer from Tyler junior college. So for Drew Galloway, I'm Mason Voth. We'll be back again tomorrow. Talk more about the cats. If you want news on K state football and basketball recruiting and everything else, Head over to kstateonline.com. Drew's got an update with a four-star receiver that will be taking an official visit to K-State uh, later on in, you know, I guess that's uh, next, next month. Week. Is next week, yeah. <laughs> uh, 
I was trying to think of my dates here, but yeah, that I guess he is coming next week. So he'll be one of the earlier guys get in just before June and uh, be kind of fascinating to see how things end up working out for K-State in their pursuit of uh, all these guys that will be coming in, in the class of 25. So almost done closing the book on them, but uh, you can get all that over at kstateonline.com and then some, and uh, keep following us right here on the YouTube and podcast platforms as well. So we're out of here. We'll talk to you again tomorrow.